Praise the Lord, everybody. My name is Pastor Tyrone P. Jones IV, and I want to welcome you to First Baptist Church of Guilford, House of Faith, where we believe in preaching, teaching, reaching, and healing. Our director of music has come up with a song that says we are gathered to worship him, to lift up our voices in praise. We're glad you have joined us in celebration to God Almighty, wonderful Savior, Lord of Lords, to him who is the King of Kings. We welcome you to First Baptist Church. Thank you for coming today. God be praised. This service is a service designed so that we can worship the Lord to get the word and go out to serve. Thank you for joining us today. Come on back and see us anytime. But right now, let's get ready to go into worship. Good morning, first. Welcome to worship this morning. 
We are so grateful because every praise is to our God. Is it not every praise? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. He's our Savior, our Deliverer, our Healer, yes? So I just want us to reflect this morning because even though somebody in the house may be going through something, he blessed us, right? There is something that we're grateful for. So I want everybody to take time and reflect on what that one thing is and raise your hand or stand up on your feet and give God worship this morning. In the name of Lord Jesus, we come thankful and we come grateful. Thankful, Lord, because you woke us up this morning. You breathe your breath of life into us. You gave us life this morning, and it could have been the other way around. Lord, and not only that, you gave us activities of our limbs. You gave us a reasonable portion of health and strength. And God, you didn't stop there. You clothed us in our right minds. And Lord, for that, we are grateful. You deserve all the honor, all the praise, and all the glory. Father, Lord Jesus, continue to go with our sick and shut-ins, the one that wanted to be here but was unable to do so. God, strengthen their bodies. Touch them, Lord. I don't know what they stand in need of, Lord, but you know all things. Oh, God, we thank you, Jesus. Continue to go with the abused, Lord, especially the children that don't have a voice. Continue to go with the homeless, Lord. Oh, God, Go with our bereaved families, not only here in Guilford, but around the world. Lord, there's so much turmoil in the world. So many people have lost loved ones, but God, you're still in control. You say it be wars and wars and rumors of wars, but don't be alarmed because the end is not yet. Oh God, we thank you for everything that you've done for us. Lord, go with our pastor in a special way, touching from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. Lord, give him a double portion of your anointing as he bring forth the word of truth to us so we can have something to feast on during the week and share with others. Go with Reverend Jay in a special way, Lord. Go in her absence, Lord. Bless her and keep her, Lord. Cover her in your blood. Oh, Lord, I thank you, Jesus. And God, go with First Baptist Church of Guilford. Please, Lord Jesus, don't let us be the church that's found wanting. God, we want to be able to stand firm on your faith to tell others about you, Lord. Oh, God, these blessings I do ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So there are so many ways to stay in contact with us here at First Baptist. We are all over social media, um, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Please like, share, and subscribe. Also, if you do not have our app, please download the First Baptist Church of Guilford app where you can find all of our events of interest at any time. So uh, we thank you for joining in with us in worship. And right now I ask, do we have any visitors here in the sanctuary or online? If you are a visitor, if you could wave your hands. If you are a visitor online, if you could put a one in the chat, if it's your first, a two in the chat, if it's your second. But members of First Baptist, if you see our visitors here, please greet them in the joy of Jesus because we are here and our doors are open at the uh, at the wonderful First Baptist Church of Guilford. So uh, thank you. Our ushers are passing out um, a card for you to fill out for them. If you could give that back to them, that would be great. All right. So announcements for the week. 
On Thursday, April 25th, join the Men of Issachar, Men of the Roundtable at 7 p.m. as they discuss the power of one real men. The meeting will be at First Baptist Church of Guilford in person in classroom four on the lower level. All men are encouraged to attend. For more information, send an email to mensministry at fbcog.org. On Saturday, April 27th, we have two things going on. The health ministry CPR class begins at 11 a.m. You can register via Eventbrite or see a representative of the health ministry. If we have members of the health ministry, if you could wave your hand so they know who you are. And also on Saturday, April 27th, uh, the FBCOG trustee ministry, along with the young adult ministry, presents a free home buyers luncheon seminar. And there is a correction to the start time. The correct start time is 10 a.m. Please register via Eventbrite, and registration ends today. So if you want to attend, please register today. On Saturday, May 4th, registration for the women's retreat on May 4th has been extended to April 28th. You may register in room 271. If you have questions, you may email the women's ministry at womensministry at fbcog.org. Now, I need some excitement around this. We're calling all youth. Calling all youth. Ooh, my praise got my voice gone. Y'all still got to get through announcements and singing. Okay. <clears throat> all right. Are you ready for Youth Week 2024? If so, please listen up so you don't miss the event. <coughs> please join us May 15th through May 19th for Youth Week. The theme this year is Proclaiming Strong Faith. And it's coming from 2 Timothy 1, 7 through 8a. The events are as follows. Wednesday, May 15th, we'll have Bible study. On Friday, May 17th, there is a lock-in from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m., for youth 11 and under. For our older youth 12 through 18, it's a full night lock-in from 6 p.m. to 8 a.m. on the 18th. Saturday, May 18th, fellowship events are at Columbia Mall from three to six. Main event for eight years through high school and bounce-tastic for pre-K to seven years old. Lastly, on Sunday, May 19th, worship service is at 11, followed by a fellowship cookout immediately after on our campus. Please register for these events via Eventbrite. Your deadline for registration is Sunday, May the 12th. If you have any questions, please see Camille Williams or Kia Smith. All right, and I will now pass our service over to our wonderful pastor, Tyronka Jones, the boy. Good morning, First Baptist. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. For the Lord is good. The Lord is wonderful. The Lord is kind. God is so awesome. And we are thankful to God for all of you joining us on this morning in person and in the Cyber Sanctuary. Thank you so much. As I always say, you could be anywhere in the world, but you decided to be here with us. And for that, we are truly grateful. Uh, I want to thank, amen, all of you. Uh, just a few things I want to reiterate, uh, well, to lift up uh, so that you might be well informed. Uh, we've already gotten uh, some of the announcements by Sister Cherie Jackson. Let's give her a hand. Amen. I want to let everyone know that beginning tomorrow, I ask for your prayers as I will be traveling to Houston, Texas. Uh, for the IC3 Pastors and Leaders Conference, sponsored by R Dr. Ralph Douglas West, Sr., and the Church Without Walls. Uh, this conference looks to help pastors and leaders gain insight and understanding uh, on new pathways and ways in which uh, to do ministry. Uh, it's my second year going, and so I ask your prayers. I'll be there for the week. Uh, so there will be no Bible study on this coming Wednesday, but I ask your prayers as I journey there. Also, beloved, we want to extend our congratulations and lift up our prayers uh, to Pastor R.B. Nix, who is going to be installed this afternoon as the new pastor of the new St. Mark Baptist Church of Baltimore, Maryland. 
Let's give God praise for him. His installation service is today at 3 o'clock. I plan to be there uh, to represent the church. And uh, we thank and praise God uh, for what God is doing in the life of New St. Mark. Uh, we miss our brother, our dear brother, Reverend Dr. Boyer Freeman. Uh, but as the church moves forward, we pray God's blessings upon them. Also, beloved, uh, we are gearing up. Election day is near. Somebody ought to give God praise for that. Our primary election season is coming up on May 14th is our time to vote. And so we're asking all of you to get to know all of the candidates' platforms, to learn what they're going to offer the constituents of the state of Maryland. Uh, we have a lot of big elections coming up this year. We're always happy to have uh, Delegate Mike Rogers here in service with us, who is running for Congress. And there are others. You know that there's a U.S. Senate seat uh, also uh, up for grabs. And uh, we ask that you would please get acquainted with all the candidates, find out what they're about, and how they can best serve the state of Maryland and beyond. Amen. So May 14th, please keep that date and please be aware of uh, the fact that that's an election day, primary election day, as we prepare for fall elections. Also, beloved, I am happy to announce that we baptized seven new disciples on yesterday. God is so good and we are thankful to God. Are any of those who are baptized here just wave your hand. Amen. Yes, yes, our sister. Amen. God be praised. Amen. We are thankful for all the new converts who have come forward to be a part of the church. The Lord continues to bless First Baptist, and he continues to add souls to the kingdom. So please continue to surround them and show them love as they're beginning their walk with Christ. Also, beloved, we are excited about our small groups ministry. Somebody ought to give God praise. Our first cohort had their fellowship on this past Thursday, and it was an awesome time in the Lord. They met at main event, and we're getting geared up for our second cohort. If you would like to become a part of a small group team, you, all you have to do is email at smallgroups at fbcog.org for more information and get ready. The second cohort is gearing up in the month of May. Amen. So be on the lookout for that. And then finally, beloved, I want to announce uh, that there is a new book coming out. Our good friend, Reverend Dr. Daryl Sims, has co-authored a book with Dr. Cindy Trim out of Atlanta, specifically for women. Somebody say, for the women of God. Amen. And so the name of the book is called Faith Fighters. And so it's a brand new book that is being put out. And uh, Reverend Daryl Sims will be here with us on May 5th, first Sunday in May, in room 271. If you have a desire, to purchase the book, you may do so, uh, but he'll be here on May 5th. Uh, I guarantee you this book will be a major blessing. And for those of you who don't know who Cindy Trim is, look her up. She is an amazing woman of God that is doing awesome things across the width and breadth of this country. Uh, so Dr. Sims and Dr. Trim have teamed up, teamed up to put together this book called Faith Fighters, specifically for women. Amen. He does a lot for men, but he's doing this for women. Uh, so you'll have your opportunity uh, to get a copy of the book on May 5th. And with that, beloved, that concludes the announcements and events of interest for the morning. We ask that you would govern yourselves accordingly. This time I'm going to ask Common Ground to come back with a selection, and I'll be back with a word. Y'all ready for a word? All right, I'm ready to give it.
chapter 3. Amen. It's in between Nahum and Zephaniah. Amen. Book of Habakkuk, chapter 3. I want to notice in your hearing verses 16 through 19 in your own personal private time with God, I would that you would read chapters 1, 2, and 3 which make up the context of this message. Habakkuk chapter 3, beginning at verse 16 and ending at verse 19. If you have it, say amen. Amen. Here begins the reading of God's word. I heard, and my heart pounded. My lips quivered at the sound. Decay crept into my bones. My legs trembled. Yet I will wait patiently the day of calamity to come on the nation invading us. Though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vine, though the olive crop fails, and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen, and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. The Sovereign Lord is my strength, makes my feet like the feet of a deer, enables me to tread on the heights of the director of the music on my string instruments. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may have to see, but we ought to pray with understanding that the will of God is going to be done. 
that God's will ought to be done in our lives. And sometimes, beloved, answered prayer can cause us to be repositioned. It cause us to be put in a different place. Now, I know sometimes when we pray, we're praying to God and we're asking God to move without thought of how it will truly affect us. We're just praying because we need our needs met. Or we're just praying because we need that door open. Or we're just praying because we need that healing touch. But at some time or another, we need to factor in that sometimes it's causing us to have to be repositioned. That we might be put in a position that we didn't expect to be put in. That we might receive something residual along with the blessing that comes from God. We all know that prayer is an essential spiritual practice. But a part of that practice is not just coming to God by way of petition, but it is also accepting fully the entire will of God for our lives. See, if you can't pray and accept fully the entire will of God for your life, might as well keep your lips closed. Might as well keep your mouth shut. Might as well keep your hands unclasped because if you're truly wanting God to move, sometimes, beloved, it means that God's got to work on us as much as God is going to work on the situation. I can't get no help this morning. It's all right, I'm going to keep preaching. I mean, I'm going to keep preaching. Sometimes God's got to work on us and that working on us part is what is unseen. It is the variable that is unknown. It is the part of our prayers when we pray and we ask God to move that we don't necessarily know how God's going to do it in our lives. And beloved, that's what's happening here in the third chapter of the book of Habakkuk. He's given us uh, his prayer and petition. In fact, beloved, if you go and research for yourselves in chapter 1, Habakkuk comes to God in prayer because of the injustices that have been served upon the people of Israel. In fact, he gives a question and query to God about why he has not answered the request of the people of Israel. In fact, beloved, it's right here in Habakkuk chapter 1, verses 2 and 3, where he says, How long, Lord, must I call for help? But you are not, you do not listen. Why do you make me look at injustice? Why do you tolerate wrongdoing, Lord? You see what's going on. You see what is happening. You see what is taking place. But I love it, beloved, because God is not afraid of our questions and God does not mind our queries. God doesn't mind us asking him questions because, beloved, asking questions is a good way to find things out. But be careful because what you find out, you may not necessarily want to hear. Because if you keep your Bibles open, you'll see right here in Habakkuk chapter 1, verse 6, that God says, I'm going to raise up the Babylonians, that ruthless and impetuous people who sweep across the whole earth to seize dwellings not their own. Wait a minute, God. I asked you to help us. Why don't you help us get justice in the land? Why are you allowing the injustices to rise? But then the answer, the retort that comes back to the question and query of Habakkuk is, I'm going to raise up a ruthless nation to come in and invade Israel. Wait a minute, God. That ain't the way I wanted this prayer to be answered. And if you tell the truth about it, that's what we say to God sometimes when God retorts back to us that I'm going to bless you, but it's coming another way. I'm going to move, but it's going to happen in a way that you didn't even see coming. So then he has a second question, because that's what we do. We ask, wait a minute, God, I don't like necessarily like how you're answering this prayer. So God, I need to ask a second question. The second question in chapter 1, verse 12, he says, you, Lord, have appointed them to execute judgment? You, my rock, 
have ordained them to punish? Wait a minute, Lord, this ain't the way I need these prayers to be answered. And how many of us have tried to push God to answer our prayers our way? We ought to relax, we ought to relent ourselves to the sovereignty of God and allow the sovereignty of God to take place in all of our lives. How many of us prayed prayers only to expect God to move the way we wanted him to? Oh, it got quiet, amen. How many of us pray prayers and we're looking for God to move in such a way and when God doesn't necessarily do it the way you thought, you got a big problem with God. The reality is we have to resolve and resign to the sovereign nature of God. In chapter 2 of Habakkuk, he goes to his station after asking his second question, and he steps into his tower awaiting God's answer to his question. So what do you do when God doesn't answer the way you wanted him to? What do you do? when answer to your prayer involves repositioning, which means initially causing ruin, which will eventually bring you to a place of rising. What, what do you do when the answer to your prayer not only means repositioning or you experiencing ruin that will cause you to rise, but also putting you in a perch and a position and in a place where you've got to go down in order to come back up? Putting you in a position and a place where you, you, you've got to endure some things in order to go through some things. And the reality is, beloved, we don't like that. See, there was a movie called A Few Good Men where, where Tom Cruise uh, was asking the question of Jack Nicholson, who was the colonel seated in the courtroom. And he says, I want the truth. He says, you can't handle the truth. And that's how some of us are. We want truth. I want the truth, God. And God is saying, okay, but you can't handle the truth. You can't handle what I'm trying to show you. Listen, God doesn't mind us asking questions as long as we're ready to receive his answers. And sometimes prayer is not only what changes outcomes and what gives us opportunities, but sometimes prayer puts us in position to be obedient despite the obstacles that we have to face. In chapter 2 of Habakkuk, God tells the prophet to write the vision and make it plain. It will speak and not lie. Verse 3 says, For the revelation awaits for an appointed time, and though it lingers, wait for it. It will certainly come and not delay. He hears what he's saying saying here that the revelation is coming on why I'm going to allow your prayers to be answered this way. But although it lingers, wait on it, because it's going to speak truth and not lie, which also means with salvation may come some suffering. With, with, with some breakthrough may come some breakage of some things in your life. Now, in other words, brother, if you want to experience breakthrough, God's first got to break some chains that are binding you in your life. If you really want to get to the root cause of the problem, you've got to look beyond what's going on on the surface and look at the specialness, the special needs that need to be met in your life. I can remember in the Gospels, in Mark Gospel chapter 2, it was there that four friends bring their paralyzed friend to Jesus. The Bible says they dig a hole through the roof, lower him down in front of Jesus, who was teaching in front of a packed room. And it is there that Jesus examines and sees the faith of the friends who brought that paralyzed man. And the Bible says because of their faith, he is forgiven. 
But wait a minute, Lord. We lowered him down in order for him to get healed of his paralysis. But sometimes, beloved, in the analysis of his paralysis, what Jesus teaches us and what Jesus shows us is that he needed to be forgiven first of his sins before he could receive the blessing of rising. But that you may know that the Son of Man has power. Rise up, take up your bed, and walk. And he takes up his bed and walks. Sometimes, beloved, God wants to get to the root problem of the issues that we're going through in our lives as a part of answered prayer. And we want God to do the surface stuff, but God says, I've got to do the interior work in order for you to really be delivered and really be blessed. Because sometimes, how many know you keep praying to God to answer the prayer for one thing. And as you're praying to God, God says, if I grant you that request, you're going to find yourself back in this same position again unless I do it my way. Somebody say God's way. It's got to be done God's way. Here it is, beloved. Here's the rub in the midst of this text. Rebecca was writing about 20 years before Jerusalem is destroyed. It's in 586 B.C. that we read about the invasion of the Babylonians. It's written as the Chaldeans here in the text. And, and in Jeremiah, it talks about the terror of the times and how King Nebuchadnezzar surrounded the city for two years, laid hold and siege to the people of Israel in Jerusalem for two years, starving them into submission. And it was there that when the king of Judah tried to escape along with some of his officials, they tried, the Bible says, to climb through a hole in the wall. It is there that Nebuchadnezzar and his army captured them, tortured them, and slaughtered them. There was no escape from the hand of the Babylonians that God allowed to invade the people of Israel. So what's coming is a wave of ruin, but it's only for a short time because the Bible is letting us know that while you're in this position, it's going to hurt, it's not going to feel good, it's not going to look right, but in the end, you'll be the better for it because you will rely and trust in me. It's in Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4, and it says these words, King James Version, that the just shall live by faith. Tell the neighbor, just shall live by faith. That God, I'm, God says, I'm hearing your prayers. I'm hearing what you're asking me for. I've got to do some internal work. A part of the internal work is not going to be so nice. It's, it's not going to be good. But, but, but in the end, you're going to come out through the refiner's fire as long as you hold on to your faith. See, what is faith unless your faith is tested? A lot of us claim to have faith when the sun is shining. We claim to have faith when there's rainbows in the sky. We claim to have faith when we got money in the bank. We claim to have faith when we got cars multiple to drive. We claim to have faith as long as we're employed and got overtime for days. We claim to have faith when everything's going good. But when your situation changes, will you still hold on to faith in God and belief in God that God I know is not so good right now but I still believe in you I still trust you I still hold on to what you told me that the darkness of the night shall not always last because I know that the sun will come out again listen child of God you prayed and cried and cried and prayed. God hears and answers your prayer. Now what you're going to do in response to God. What do you do 
when your hopes, your dreams, your aspirations, your expectations, what do you do when your assumptions come crashing down before you and life does not turn out the way you thought it would? Will you still hold on to your faith in Almighty God? When life starts lifing, how are you going to live? Habakkuk 2 and 4 says that even though I'm allowing these things to happen as a part of answered prayer, he says the just, hallelujah, shall live by faith. Now watch this. This fascinated me in this study. This text says here, Habakkuk asked his why question. Why the injustice? Why do you allow the wrongdoing to take place? Why do you not hear the cries of your people? All of the why questions. God responds that I'm going to answer prayer, but I'm going to do it my way in a sovereign way. And then God responds with his why, to his why questions with woes. Tell the neighbor woe. There are five Woes that I'm going to summarize in Habakkuk chapter 2 that you need to see and see what God is trying to say to the people of Israel. Right here in Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 6, first woe says to him who piles up stolen goods and makes himself uh, uh, wealthy by extortion. That's a person who is overly aggressive. That's the sin of aggression. It's here, second woe is in uh, Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 9 where he says, Woe to him who builds his house by unjust gains, setting his nest on high to escape ruin. That's the woe of covetousness. Woe to him, chapter 2 verse 12, who builds a city with bloodshed and establishes a town by injustice. This is a woe of violence. Then he says, woe to him who gives drink to his neighbor, pouring it from the wine skin till they're drunk so that they can gaze on the naked bodies of others. This is the woe of immorality. That's right there in verse 15. Then the last one is in verse 19 of Habakkuk chapter 2. Y'all see what I'm seeing right here? Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 19. The fifth woe is to him who says uh, to wood come to life or to a lifeless stone wake up. C can it give guidance? It's covered with gold and silver, but there's no breath on it. This is the woe of idolatry. Watch this. He talks about aggression, covetousness, violence, immorality, and idolatry. And I like how God ends his response to Habakkuk's prayer. He says in verse 20, chapter 2, these words, The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent Shh, before him. I I'm going to establish the sovereignty that I have. And I'm going to show you that these evildoers that I am allowing to come in and invade the city is either going to point you closer to me or is going to point you further away from me. Either you're going to draw closer to God because of this experience or you're going to drive yourself further away from God because of this experience. And if you find yourself in this situation where you find yourself in the midst of these woes, woe unto you because it's not going to be good for you. See, the reason why Israel was enduring the fact that this Babylonian nation was invading them was because God was wanting to teach them a lesson. That you can't do any and everything before God and expect God to bless you. Is this, this, is this thing on? Amen. You, you can't live your life all willy-nilly before God and then come to God in prayer and say, Lord, I need you to bless me without God recognizing the consequences of your ways 
before he brings the blessing. Sometimes, beloved, we, 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 we treat God like cosmic Santa Claus. Or we treat God like a soap dispenser. And every time I need to wash myself clean of whatever is going on, we go to God and we, we hit the dispenser warning God to dispense blessings over our lives. But guess what, beloved? How you live counts. How you live when you're in the good days and in the midst of your bad days counts. How you live according to the will and way of God counts. The just shall live by faith. You got to hold on to what God has said to you. You've got to believe and trust in what God has shared. And you've got to live a life accordingly. That no matter what goes on in this life, I still trust God. I want my life to be pleasing before God. You can't come to God all any old kind of way. Because, beloved, you're going to get your prayers answered. But you've got to go through a little something, something before you do. You, you, you've got to go through a little something, something before God answers your request. So now, when we go to Habakkuk chapter 3. I, I did, all this was set up for this, and I'm almost done, amen, because I know y'all, y'all, 8 o'clock people like to get going, amen, for Sunday school. So here it is. By the time we get to Habakkuk chapter 3, keep your Bibles open so you see I'm not reading anything up. By the time we get to chapter 3, verse 16, when he, meaning Habakkuk, finally realizes the impending judgment and punishment that's coming upon Israel, puts himself in position where he says these words, I, I heard and my heart pounded. I, I, I've seen what's coming and my lips quivered at the sound. Decay crept into my bones and my legs trembled. Yet I will, watch the phraseology, wait patiently for the day of calamity to come on the nation invading us. Wait a minute. This, Deacon Carolyn Jones, this, this puzzled me. He says, I heard, my heart is pounding, my lips are quivering, my, my, my bones are shaking, my legs are trembling, yet I will. Tell a neighbor, yet I will. Yet I will wait. Peace, what? Patiently for the day of calamity to come on the nation invading us. I got a couple of queries of my own. How is it that you recognize that God is using an enemy nation to be the tool of instruction to guide Israel into a place where they're going to be brought down because of their own sin and brought down because they have not trusted and believed in God and now he was crying before why God gave him the woes but now he's willing to wait patiently pa patiently waiting on calamity that is to come how is it that Habakkuk was able to reap to part his lips and to say, I, yet I will wait patiently. What turned the perplexity of his prayers into patiently waiting on the impending calamity that was going to come on the nation of Israel? Can I help somebody real quick? And then I'm going to get you out of here. Can I help somebody? I think in this moment, that Habakkuk recalls the, that, that while the enemy is strong, y'all ready for this? God is stronger. Okay, okay. That's about 15 of you clapping. You just added two minutes to the sermon. Here, here, here it is. The enemy is strong, but God is strong. See, the reason you should adopt a yet I will spirit is because, first of all, he prays for answers 
to his why questions, God responds, I'm going to use the enemy to bring about the justice you seek. He prays, why use them, Lord? God responds, I'm going to teach everybody a lesson on my sovereignty so that why will lead to woe, so then woe can lead to wait. Come here, come here, come here. All right, all right. I, I, I was just like you. Didn't quite get how, this could, how can I adopt a yet I will spirit? Rebecca responds, yet I will wait patiently on calamity. Why does he answer with waiting? Because, here it is, when you know what God is able to do, and you know that God is sovereign, and you know your Lord, the Lord, side, then all you got to do is have a recall. Tell a neighbor a memory. Tell somebody a flashback. Somebody tell somebody just remember what the Lord did for me. Okay, okay, okay. All right, all right. I know you're ready to go. I know you're ready to go. Here it is, here it is, here it is. Let me give you this and I'm gone. The reason why he could wait is because history tells us that God is always stronger than our enemies. Okay, verse 5 of chapter 3 says this. I got to give you this, and then I'm gone. Verse 5, keep your Bibles open. He says, plagues went before him, pestilence follows his steps. When he talks about plagues and pestilence, it is a reminder of how God delivered the children of Israel from the hands of the Egyptians. When you keep reading, it talks about the fact that Israel was in the hands of of the Egyptians in the hands of those who were the enemy but God found a way to send a deliverer to help the nation of Israel come out of Egypt okay 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 H history tells us that not only does God is stronger than our enemies because he brought in pestilence and plagues to remind us of the deliverance from Egypt but then he also verse 10 of chapter 3 talks about water Right here, water. He says that the mountains saw you and withered. Torrents of water swept by. The deep roared and lifted its waves on high. This is a reminder that the fact that Noah and his family were the only ones that trusted in God and that God allowed them to build what would be for their salvation an ark to stay in for over 150 days and then what they never saw come from the sky fell down from the heavens and water covered the face of the earth and if God was able to sweep the sins of the people in the antediluvian era off of the earth and then provide a way of escape for a family that kept on having faith and trust in God, surely the Lord can deliver me and give me what I stand in need of. Okay, y'all need one more. Y'all need one more. History also reminds me not only did the hand of God deliver me from Egypt and not only did the hand of God deliver Noah and his family bringing the mountains to be covered by water and the torrent of God's waves to sweep over the earth. But look at verse 11. Verse 11 says the sun and the moon stood still in the heavens and the glint of your flying arrows at the lightning of your flashing spear what is he talking about here this harkens back to the only time in all of Israelic history in the book of Joshua chapter 10 look it up when you get home Joshua chapter 10 round about verses 13 and, and, and 14 right about there where the Bible says that after the campaign of Ai where Joshua was successful that the people at Gibeon 
was there calling, trying to sign a treaty with Joshua and the people of Israel. But there were five kings that said, we ain't having none of this. And the people of Gibeon said, we need Joshua to come down and see about us. Enemies are about to overtake us. Y'all, I thought I had Bible readers here. And the Bible says that when they got there, they had been traveling all night long. They had been traveling through the night in order to get to those people who were in need of help. And it was there that the Bible says that Joshua commanded the Lord to allow the sun to stand still and not move so that they could win the battle and that the moon would not move so that they could pursue and move and win the battle. Y'all ain't getting none of this. The Bible lets us know that Joshua is the only man in the entire biblical history that could cause God to make the sun stand still and the moon stand still and he was the only one that was able to do it and God heard his request and granted it and blessed Israel to be able to overcome in fact the Bible said that God hurled down stones from heaven in order to kill the enemy they he God killed more enemies than the Israelites did and God says my hand uh, is on the people of God don't you know that when you're on the Lord's side that God will provide a way that you will be able to overcome whatever you face and that whatever your enemies try to do against you it's going to fail because God's using them as a tool to help you understand just how good and how mighty God really is somebody needs to understand that if you look back over history You've already been delivered from some things. You've already been set free from some things. You've already overcome some things. You've already been blessed. That's why I have a yet I will spirit. That's why I can wait patiently even though calamity is on the horizon because the same God that got me through the mess before is the same God that will get me through the mess that is to come. The same God that said just stand still and see is the same God that will make a highway in the middle of the Red Sea. Don't you know God is able to do it? He's more powerful than any force in the universe verse you just got to have faith in God and trust do you trust God this morning I'm preaching too good for y'all to be sitting there I'm sorry I know I am I'm preaching too good for y'all to just pity pat God because the reality is something is coming in your life that's unexplainable. You ain't gonna know how to deal with it or how to handle it, but you got to say, Lord, I resolve and resign to your sovereign ways that you're able to get me through it, yet I will wait patiently for my deliverance. I gotta wait patiently for my deliverance. I gotta wait patiently for the Lord to bless. That's why I like what it says in Isaiah 40 and 31, and I'm done. It says, they that wait upon the Lord, I thought I had Bible readers, shall renew their strength and shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run <laughs> and not get weary. They shall walk and not faint. Psalm 27, 14 says, wait on the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Don't faint because of what's coming. I don't know who this is for. Don't flip out because of what you see on the horizon. Know that the everlasting God, the sovereign one of Israel, the God of our fathers loves you enough to allow you to go through this, but you come through unscathed and unharmed. In fact, you're going to be blessed the better for it. Because God sees beyond where we can see. Somebody said God sees up to the corner. No, God sees around the corner, down the road, up the street, through the neighborhood. He sees the beginning from the end. He's Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. Listen, if you don't remember anything else I said, just remember this. You got to have a yet I will spirit. I will wait. Anybody going to wait on the Lord?
I don't mind waiting, Lord. I don't mind waiting if it's going to mean I see your sovereignty. I don't mind waiting if it's going to show me a better way. I don't mind waiting, Lord God, even if it's impending calamity, to know, God, you'll carry us through. Israel in this moment in history suffered because of their own disobedience. They didn't trust God. They started worshiping idols, giving in to doing things that their enemy was doing. So God says the very enemy that is doing what you're doing, I'm bringing them in to take over. It's going to be a 70-year siege. You're going to have to be under their rule and regime. But it's for the purpose of reminding you that I'm ever with you. See, the people of Israel was never without a word. They were never without a word while they were waiting. Hallelujah. And God wanted me to share this word with someone today. That I will have a yet I will spirit. Yet I will wait. I didn't get to this part. Because in my waiting, I will then have a yet I will rejoice and worship God. But you can't worship, hallelujah, unless you're willing to wait. And you can't wait unless you understand his woes. And if you understand his woes, then you know he'll answer your why. If you're here today, and you've heard this word. God is speaking to your spirit right now. Won't you step forward? Give the deacons and the minister your hand and give God your heart. For those on the other side of the screen, you can call us at 301-725-2600. Someone will respond to your call. Or you can email us at admin at fbcog.org. Someone will email you and you can become a virtual member of First Baptist Church of Guilford. I told you last Sunday, we got a member in Illinois. We got members in Kentucky. We've got members in Georgia virtually. They are part of First Baptist. They give God praise for that. But for those of you here, you can step forward now. Give God your life. Say, Lord, I'm waiting till my change come. I see on the horizon impending calamity, but I'm not worried, God. Yet I will wait patiently because I know you got a plan for my life. Won't you come? I don't mind way. I don't mind waiting, I don't mind waiting on you, Lord. I don't mind waiting, I don't mind waiting, I don't mind waiting on you, Lord. Come on, let's do it one more time. I don't mind waiting, I don't mind waiting, I don't mind waiting. Don't sing it if you don't mean it. <laughs> oh, I don't mind waiting, I don't mind waiting, I don't mind waiting. God some praise. We thank God for his word that reminds us that no matter what we go through or how challenging life may be, that God is there to see us through every step of the way. Be careful what you pray for. <laughs> be careful. He just might answer your Beloved, it's offering time in the sanctuary. Come on, give God praise. We thank and praise God for the opportunity to give 
Thank you, praise God. We got something to give. So we ask you to get your best gift in your hand. For those of you at home, there are three ways in which you can give on the screen. And I ask that you pray with me now. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come now thankful and grateful for the opportunity to participate in this act of worship. I pray that you bless the hand of every giver in the house. Bless those, Lord God, 30, 60, 100 fold, whatever they stand in need of, in the spirit in which they give, return it back to them. And then, God, bless those who have a desire to give but have not the means to do so. God, we praise you now. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, ushers. Come on, choir. season come on give God praise amen amen thank you so much for your giving we pray that God bless you 30 60 100 fold in the spirit in which you gave that we return back to you many times over thank you online for your gifts all across the country for how you bless First Baptist Church of Guilford amen all right let's all prepare to stand and be dismissed Sunday school starts immediately after worship I want you to come and learn the Word of God you might have faith in God as well. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, Lord Jesus, we come now grateful and thankful for what our eyes have seen, for what our ears have heard, and what our hearts now feel in this place. Thank you for your word, Lord God, that reminds us that because we have history with you, you have always been stronger than our enemies. So Lord, even when you allow the enemy to come in like a flood, we know, Lord God, that we have the advantage because we're on the Lord's side. Bless us now, God. Now that we have received this word, let us go out and serve and be a blessing to others. It's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Come on, help me say it. Amen. Amen. Until next time, be blessed.